Welcome to VLOOKUP WEEK VIDEO NUMBER ONE. Hey, in this video here, this is going to be an epic video. 25 tips from absolute basic beginner VLOOKUP all the way to advanced. So this is like one-stop shopping for how to use VLOOKUP. Now, this is going to be a very long video, so if you click on the link below, um, the show more button below this video. There'll be uh, a table of contents with 25 topics and minute marks. So you can hyperlink, click on the minute mark in at YouTube and it jumps to that section of the video. All right, so we're gonna start right off the bat. VLOOKUP, what does it do? Well, the V means vertical. If you used HLOOKUP, the H means horizontal. <laughs> but but wait a second, what does VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP mean anyway? And why are they so common? Well, the bottom line is everybody needs to look stuff up. So for example, invoices, sometimes you need to look up a product you're selling and find a part number, the flight range, these are boomerangs here, flight range out, or price. Uh, this is vertical because the item we're looking up, we need to tell the VLOOKUP function, hey, we have the bell and boomerang and we need our VLOOKUP to tell us how, what the price is. This is orientated vertical, so you use VLOOKUP. This one um, is orientated horizontally. Now right here, this would be the lookup or the part number here. But because we're looking it up in a horizontal and then returning something from a row, that would be HLOOKUP. Another example, uh, commissions, right? You may have uh, various commissions. You either want to show a category, like how, what type of uh, sales you had, above par, very good, excellent. Or you might get paid a certain commission. Uh, taxes, uh, you might have to look up an income amount and return a tax rate or taxes from previous brackets. Human resources, you might have an ID and you, then you need to return last, first, email, and phone. So lots of examples. All VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP do, and other um, functions also. This video is just about VLOOKUP and one uh, example of HLOOKUP. Uh, throughout the rest of the week, we'll look at some of the other lookup functions. But all of the lookup functions, what do they do? They look stuff up. Now let's start right at the beginning. VLOOKUP, what does it do? It delivers a value to a cell. Now we're going to look at exact match lookup first and then later we'll look at approximate match. Now what does exact match mean? Well if I type quad here, I want the price just to pop up. So I'm going to put a formula in this cell, it's a VLOOKUP, and it will look here and it will get the correct price and deliver it to the cell. So VLOOKUP delivers something to a cell. Now the way VLOOKUP works is exactly the way we humans do it. Now let's think about how we humans do it. We look at this word, quad, we put it in our brain, we remember, we go up to the, we know where the table is, right? Usually it's printed out next to us or something like that. You go through the first column when you find the thing that's in your brain here, that tells you what row in the table has the potential data. Now once we know the row, we also need to know the column. Our price is in the one, two, three, four column. Then we take that number in our brain, we come over here and we type 35.95. Now I want the formula to do it automatically, so we're going to use VLOOKUP. V for vertical, look up because we're looking stuff up. Now the nice thing about this screen tip, it's just like we humans do it when we do it by hand. You first need to tell the VLOOKUP, what are you looking up, called the lookup value. You have to tell it, hey, please put quad in your brain, VLOOKUP's brain, comma. Now, the next thing, you got to tell VLOOKUP where the table is. Now, I'm going to highlight this entire table. First column always has the lookup value, and then subsequent columns um, are data to retrieve. So there's the table array, comma, column index. Well, just like we would know, one, two, three, four, the fourth column has our price. We're going to type a four here, comma, and then the lookup range. Either 
true approximate match. We'll look at that later. That's the default. You never have to type that in. You just leave that out. It's when you want exact match, which we do here. You put a 0. You can certainly double click there, and it puts false, but 0 will always work. All right, so there you go. 39.95. Now the cool thing is, if I change this to Carlota, boom, it changed. Now we have an invoice set up. We have price times unit. So I say equals price times unit. That's our first example of an exact match. Now watch this. So I'm a really bad typer. And then once in a while, I, oh, I type the wrong uh, name here. So there's a couple things we're going to do to fix that. Notice, what does VLOOKUP do if it can't find the exact match? It's very polite. It says, not available. All right. All right, so let's type this down here. We're going to see what, um, how we can amend our formula here to show a message that says you have the wrong uh, lookup value. So down here, we're going to do our same VLOOKUP, remember? Now, in 2007 or later, if you type your function name, after a while you get the hang, you know that VL will immediately show us in blue this drop down. That's the VLOOKUP. Then you can just hit Tab. There's our lookup value, comma to get to the next argument. There's our table, comma to get to the next argument. It's a 4, comma, and 0. All right, so again, we want when we mistype it to show uh, something different than NA. No problem. In 2007 and 10, you can use this great function called if error. If error, it simply allows you to put your function or formula inside of the if error. You come to the end, comma to get to the next argument, and now you tell it what you want to display. And since we're putting text, into a formula, you have to put it in double quotes. Um, now, one thing about text in formulas um, is that if you enter this formula without spell checking it, like right now it says incorrect boomerang nem. If you did run spell check, it will not catch it because it's inside a formula. So you actually have to run spell check while you're in edit mode. This keyboard shortcut for spell check is F7. OK, so I guess NAM is a word. So now you got to, let's try this, F7. So there it found incorrect. That's incorrect. All right, so now it says incorrect uh, boomerang name. And you can put whatever message you want there. And then you type it, and boom. Now another. Uh, even uh, another way to deal with this problem is to use something called data validation list. Now notice, the only things we're ever going to want to put in that cell down there are from this column of the first column of our lookup table, right? All these words here. So I'm going to come down here and do data validation list, which means there will be a drop down and we can select, and it will only pick from here. So data validation is on the data ribbon data validation, and then that right there. The keyboard shortcut is Alt-DL. Alt-DL, allow, allow what? Not any value. How about a list or a source? And then we simply highlight this up here, and then click OK. So now we have a drop down. And so we're not going to make a spelling error. And then we could go ahead and do our formula equals VLOOKUP. We got our lookup value, comma, our table array, comma, 4, comma, 0. All right, now, notice um, we keep having to highlight this range over here. One way you can uh, get around that is to use named ranges. And so we're going to do two different ranges. We're going to create a named range for our data validation and for our VLOOKUP table. Now this is the name box. The name box is to the left on the formula bar. You can simply highlight and come up here and type whatever name you want, like DL 
boomerangs or something like that and then hit enter All right so now you can test it by clicking somewhere else and then now the name box has a drop down and you can select and it actually jumps to that area all right so now we can highlight this whole table and then up in the name box we can type I'm going to type V table enter now we have two ranges up here and sometimes it's handy to know how to edit this the keyboard shortcut and I do have some notes over to the side here so we just we're down here and we want to create uh, data validation and VLOOKUP using named ranges. Now, before we do that, let's look at how to edit them. The keyboard, well, let's see, so it's under formulas, name manager. The keyboard shortcut is control F3. And so then you can uh, select whichever one you want, edit. Um, and we don't need to add them, both of our names are correct. Now, let's do data validation, Alt D L tab I'm going to type the L key to get to list tab and I'm going to use the F3 key F3 notice it was control F3 to to get to the name manager F3 gives me the option for paste names so I want DL boomerangs there it is and then I click OK so I can select that now let's do our VLOOKUP equals VL we have I hit the left arrow to insert that cell into the formula, comma, and now I need my table name, so I'm going to hit F3, and I'm going to say V table, comma, 4, comma, 0. Now there's another great advantage to using defined names. Let's uh, scroll over here, and I have a little invoice template here. Now, let's go ahead and do our VLOOKUP. So VLOOKUP, we, our lookup value is going to be our product name, comma, our table. I'm going to hit F3, double click, comma. Co actually, let me show you a different way. If you know uh, how it's spelled, you type VT. And notice the icon is a function for functions and a little dog tag for names. So VT, and then you could hit tab. Comma, the index, the column index is going to be 4, comma, 0. Now, that cell reference, J25, is a relative cell reference. The formula is right here, but this formula, because it's a relative cell reference, will always look 1, 2 cells to my left. But this, when you give it a defined name, it's locked. This will move relatively. This will be absolute. So when I control enter and drag it down, notice when I click um, F2 to put it in edit mode, that cell reference is moving as I copy it, but that's not. That's locked. If you come up here, you can actually even see a little uh, preview of the green there, meaning it's still highlighted. All right, so one advantage for defined names is that it's absolute. When you copy the formula, it's locked in comparison to a relative cell reference, which moves. Now, in an invoice, this is a perfect situation. We, we don't want that NA. Now, a couple minutes ago, we saw how to use the IF error. But let's see how to use the IF function. Because in this situation, we uh, anytime the cell 1, 2 to our left is equal to blank, then we want to show a blank. So we could do this. Use the if function. And the logical test would be anytime that cell right there, and we use the comparative operator equal, and blank is denoted, or the syntax in Excel is double quote, double quote. So that's the logical test inside the if that comes out true or false comma, the value if true. That means what do we want to put in the cell? If it is blank, I'm going to put double quote, double quote, comma, otherwise, if that's false, which means something there, then please run VLOOKUP. And now we can drag this down. Now that's important because in some cases, if you're working up here, we saw the if error. Right? So if error only exists in seven, 2007 and 2010. So 
in some cases where you don't have something to trigger it like that blank over there, you actually might have to use the if function. So here I'm going to say equals if. And the logical test here, I need to say, is the VLOOKUP an error? So I'm going to say, is an A? Is an A is a true false uh, function. It delivers either a true, yes, it is an NA, is an NA error, or it's not false. So I'm going to put that VLOOKUP there. All right, again, this is what you had to do in earlier versions. That's the logical test. This only comes out true or false. Well, when it is an NA, what do we want? Comma, the value of true is, I'm going to put double quote here. You could put any message you want inside there. Otherwise, the value of false, I'm going to paste that VLOOKUP. And so that's how you had to do, you had to do something similar to this in 2003 or earlier versions. Right? So if I put uh, something like that, incorrect name, maybe I want to put that same little I'm copying it in edit mode. And then down here, I'll highlight that in Control V. Kind of nice to have that data validation. All right, so back over here, that was a, a nice solution there. And then, of course, you could uh, run your total column there for your invoice. All right, um, one other situation for VLOOKUP. I'm going to do Alt D L, Tab L, Tab. F3 is sometimes we want to select a particular product, but we don't want to have, we don't actually want to show the price. So here in these formulas, we're just using VLOOKUP to deliver a value to the cell. But now we want to combine. So I want to have that number show up in a formula. So over here, if we wanted total, we'd have to say that cell times this cell. So we get 95, 85. But what if you don't want this cell? For whatever reason, you just want the total, the units and the total. So I select Majestic Butte, no problem. We can literally uh, use this inside of a formula. So here, whereas here it's delivering a value to the cell, here in this formula we're going to have VLOOKUP deliver a value to the formula. So I'm going to say VLOOKUP, this comma VT comma 4 comma 0. I'll enter this and we can see it gives us 31.95. Now it's delivering something to the cell. Now I'm simply going to take the result of VLOOKUP multiply it times that. And there we get in a single cell our answer. Now there's a great uh, feature under formulas, uh, evaluate formula right here. The keyboard shortcut that I memorized is TUF, T-U-F, Alt T-U-F, Alt T-U-F. That's really tough. Whoops. Alt T-U-F. The great thing about this evaluation is you can click on this or hit Enter and watch the formula evaluate. Now watch VLOOKUP. Ah, VLOOKUP is simply delivering a number to a formula. And so then we get our result. All right, now HLOOKUP. This is a rare situation, but occasionally you'll have a table uh, orientated horizontally. Now I didn't mean to have this table set up this way, so I'm going to do a little trick here. I'm going to highlight the whole row point with my cursor like that, hold Shift and drag up. When you download this, it'll be like this correctly. All right, so let's put our um, bellin. And we want to do horizontal. So HL, exactly the same, except for it's going to be looking something up in the first row and then returning uh, a certain row number. So the lookup value this, comma, the table array with H and V lookup. You never highlight the uh, field names there. Comma, it's still 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, but now it's row, comma, 0. Right, so if I change this to Carlota, it changes. All right, so that is a bunch of things about VLOOKUP and exact 
match. Now let's go look at approximate match. Approximate match is great. Again, uh, we're going to do the same thing. VLOOKUP is going to deliver a value to a cell, but we'll be doing approximate match. Now here's the situation. You have some sales, and you had 7,500. I'm going to use Control Shift 4 to format that. So you're going to look down here. You're going to realize 7,000. I'm above 1,000, but above 7,000, but less than uh, 10,000. So my commission is going to be 250 bucks. So I need to use this table to deliver that 250 here. Now look at this. This is different because there's some gaps. Here's our first column, and there's gaps. So it's a number value we're looking up, right? But there's some gaps in between here. Now, literally, here is a way, or here's a way to think about how the VLOOKUP function is going to work in this situation. You're going to take this in your brain. You're going to race down the first column. And you, the first bigger number that you bump into, so I'm going to bump into 7,000. That's the first number bigger than 7,500. Then it jumps back to the next row. Then it knows which row, and you can either deliver a category or a commission paid or whichever column you want. Now, technically, that's not the way the uh, VLOOKUP and other lookup functions do this approximate match. But it's a great way to, to think about it, especially when you're learning. Now, here's how VLOOKUP sees it. Uh, for this category right here, Notice it's going to be the sales are going to be greater than or equal to the 0, less than 1,000. So if it's exactly 0, it's going to um, be included here, everything up to but not including 1,000. So right here, if you have exactly 2,500, your commission is $100, all the way up to but not including the 7,000. The last category, I had a formula here. The lower, uh, the actual amount for any category is always included. So the zeros here, the ones, the thousand here, two thousand five hundred here, ten thousand here. All right. So, but this last category is slightly different. It's greater than or equal to ten thousand. So another important thing about this is this first column must be sorted from smallest to biggest. So here's a little note right here. Not only that, but this is uh, if we give it a lookup value here, meaning your sales sales less than that first number in the first column here, it'll give you an NA. Now, in our case, we're not going to have any negative numbers. But that's what it would do, and we'll test it and see. All right, so let's go ahead and try this. Equals V lookup. The lookup value is going to be this, comma, the table array comma, the column index. I want 1, 2, 3. And since true or 1 is the default, if that's what you're doing, just leave it out. Notice this square bracket here. Anytime you see a square bracket in a argument uh, a screen tip here, it means you can leave it out and it will assume the default. So we're going to assume the default. So that makes approximate match a little bit shorter formula here. Now let's test it. How about 0? How about 2,500? All right. How about uh, 6,999 and 99 pennies? Oh, one penny short of the big jump from 100 to 250, 7,000. Let's try minus 5. NA. Again, it's going to give an NA if it finds something smaller than that. And then let's try something really big. All right? All right. So it's going to anything equal to that or greater for the last category will uh, pick that up. So that is approximate match. Now let's go over to this next sheet. The next topic we want to talk about is how to do VLOOKUP when the table is on a different sheet. Notice we have a different sheet right here. And when the table is in a different workbook. Now when you download this workbook, you can download uh, VLOOKUP Shark Week, this one. But you can also download uh, the C table. All right, No problem. You can do it a couple different ways. You can use uh, sheet references or workbook reference, or you could even use a, uh, a name for, for example, you can name this right here. But we're going to use sheet references. All right, so VLOOKUP with a table on a different sheet 
equals VL tab. Your sales, oops, let's type in uh, 7,500. Control Shift 4 for currency, copy, Control C, Control V for paste. All right, so equals V lookup. I want to look up this value, comma, the table array. Now, the table is not on this sheet. So all we have to do is click on the next sheet and then highlight. Now, now noticed up here, it says table exclamation point. It's being polite. Inside the formula, it's putting the sheet name here so you know where, in fact, this table is from. And then I'm going to highlight that table, A6 to C6. I'm going to type a comma and then 1, 2, 3. So you can see this emerging up here. There's the column index. I'm going to leave the last argument off. It's the default. Close parentheses and Enter. So now that looks like it's working. Control Shift 4. If I change this to 0, 8,000, 11,000. All right. and. So that's from a different sheet. The only difference is you have one extra click. You click on the actual sheet. Now let's do, and you can see down here I have this workbook, so we can go back and forth. Equals V lookup. I'm going to say look up that, comma, table. Well, it's in a different workbook, so I come down here and click. I highlight the table. Now notice by default, it has these dollar signs, which means it's absolute, just like a defined name. I'm going to type a comma, you can see it start to emerge up here, three close parentheses. Now let's take a look at this one. This one puts the, um, in square brackets, the name of that workbook. When you close it, it will have the file path name there. Now if you're doing a workbook reference, you better keep the workbooks together or at least in the same place and don't move them because they're communicating. I'm going to control S to save this. I'm going to close this one right here. And now when I open up this, you can see the whole file path name. All right, now let's go over and talk about the next topic, full record retrieval. All right, so we have a database here. And I want to do uh, data validation and show my, the ID and then extract. Any ID, ID right here, I literally want to extract the entire record. I want to see four ways to do this. Now I'm going to do Alt-D-L, Tab-L, Tab, and Highlight. Click OK. Now watch this. I'm going to copy that cell and Control-V and control V and control V. So all I did was copy. And sure enough, the data validation came. So I'm going to select this, which is uh, this record right here. Now, the, the VLOOKUP is going to need to know in its formula for last name, it needs to know the second column. For first name, it needs to know, it needs to know that's in the third column, fourth, fifth. Now, there's a few ways we can do it. Um, you can literally put the numbers right here, 2, tab, 3, tab, 4, tab, 5. Totally easy way to do it. So equals V lookup. I'm going to say look up this. Now, we're copying this formula to the side, so we're going to have to lock it. Now, if you hit the F4 key, it locks your cell reference. Now, there's two dollar signs. A means the column reference A is locked. 14 means the row reference 14 is locked. Now that'll work here. So I'm just going to, because we want it we want it locked as we move. Later we'll talk about situations where you want one lock but not the other. The table. Now we use define names uh, just a little while ago, but certainly you don't have to. You can just hit the F4 key because we're going to copy this. In fact, let me leave it like that, and we'll just make an error and come back and fix it. Now the column, I'm simply going to click right there, comma, and this is an exact match, so I'm going to put 0. All right, now let me drag this over one. I uh, pointed to that little uh, fill handle in the lower right-hand corner and 
that crosshair or angry rabbit allows you to click and drag. Now you can see what happened here. The formula totally obeyed us, right? It We didn't lock it in any way, so the green box moved called a relative cell reference. So let's come back over here and hit, I'm going to highlight this whole thing and hit the F4 key. That B12, or two cells above, I want to be relative cell reference. So when I drag this over, I come over here and I can see it got it exactly right. That's locked there. The green one's locked there. And that one is moving as a relative cell reference. All right, now there are other ways to do this. Sometimes you, you can't have uh, your column index number up here. So we're going to look at the columns function equals columns. Columns, all it does is it looks at a range and tells you how many columns there are. So I'm going to type this one out. I'm going to type dollar sign, and I'm sitting in cell B18. So I'm going to type B18 colon B18. Now this construction here is an expandable range. It means it will expand as I copy to this side. Notice the B if it's a relative cell reference, when I copy it over, it'll move to C, whereas the dollar signs in front of the B, it says, you are locked. So right now, it's from B to B. How many columns are there? One. But when it goes to B to C, it'll give us two. So column says, how many columns? Now, the cool thing about this is, it is it'll give us one, two, three as we copy to the side. That's not exactly what we want, so I'm going to add one more in. And that'll give us exactly what we want. That is going to be our the just part of our formula. That's going to be the column index number. So now we build our VLOOKUP, VL tab. I'm going to click on that F4 to lock it. That's the lookup value, comma our table. F4 to lock it, comma, and there's the column index number. Control Enter. And so we have some problem here. Forgot to put comma 0. And then copy it over. All right, and so we can change this, and it will update. All right, now, sometimes you don't want your data shown or the, the fields extracted horizontally. You want it vertically. So we can simply do that with equals VL. Select that, F4, comma, the table, F4, comma, and then instead of columns, you guessed it, we use rows. I'm sitting in B22. So guess what? This time we don't lock the B, we lock the 22. All right? That'll give us how many rows? 22 to 22 is 1. We want 2, so we start with uh, plus 1. Now, there are other ways. I'm going to put a 0 here. There's other ways. You could use the row function, but the rows is more robust because that whole uh, the information, which is uh, going to give us 1, 2, 3, is from that cell. So if you ever to ex insert any other rows or columns, this will not give you the incorrect number. Whereas if you use just row, you might. Um, have a formula error and extract the incorrect uh, record. All right, so now I can copy this down. And it looks like I'm extracting the uh, correct one. Still, one other way is to use the match function. Now, right here, we have field names. And if I ask you which position is the word last, one, two. Oh. How about this? Which position is the email? One, two, three, four. So we can use the match function. Now, the match function is a lookup function. We're literally going to look up this field name right here. The match function will look up last, but it won't return a thing from the table. It will return the relative position. So I can use the match function, lookup function. Comma, there's the lookup value, comma, within lookup array, I'm simply going to highlight this. Now I'm going to have to hit the F4 key, and watch this. When I hit F4, it not only locks it, but it jumps the screen back in, which is kind of nice. 
comma, I am looking up a word, and that, so I'm going to use uh, exact match. Notice in uh, later videos, later this week, we'll talk about match. Match has a few more options than VLOOKUP. The 1 and the 0 are exactly like VLOOKUP. This one will be a little bit different. Now remember, VLOOKUP, I mean, so match is looking up the word last in that range, and it tells us it's in the second position. Is that not totally cool? So now we can simply use that match inside of our VLOOKUP. I'm going to look up this F4, comma, the table array. I probably should have named it F4, comma, and there's our column index. The match is delivering the column uh, index number, comma, 0. And so I can select. And there we go. All right, so that's four different ways to extract um, actual full records. Let's go look up at another common uh, VLOOKUP situation. Now it looks now here's the situation. Sometimes you have two or more lookup values. Now, how in the world are you going to deal with that, right? We don't have a unique identifier in the first column. We have Joe, Joe, Joe. So if we looked up Joe, it would only get the first one. Anytime uh, you're doing an exact match and you give uh, look up, if you look up uh, some value and there's duplicates, it'll just return the first one. Now, we really need Joe Washington, Joe Oregon, Joe California. So the easiest way to do this is to add a extra column to the to the left. So it, it becomes the new first column and join these two. <clears throat> it's easy enough to do. I'm going to say relative cell reference. And I'm going to use Shift 7. That's the ampersand. That is the join symbol. And then I'm going to put some character in double quotes, like a dash or a, a, a vertical bar or something like that. And double quote, ampersand, and then this. So what I've done is I've created a unique identifier. Now there will be no duplicates in this first column. Uh, sales rep, some symbol, state. Control Enter, and then double click and send it down. I'm taking my Angry Rabbit and double clicking. Now we have a unique identifier. Now, since we have two different cells inputs over here, uh, we need to join these two things inside of our VLOOKUP. So watch this, VLOOKUP. And VLOOKUP, well, now our whole table is going to be this. So that's the first column. That, ampersand double quote, vertical bar, double quote, ampersand, and this. So if you were to highlight this inside the formula, you could use your F9 key to evaluate. And you can see now we have from two input cells, two lookup values, we have a single lookup value. I'm going to Control Z. I don't want to hard code that in. Comma, the table, comma, the index number. I want ID, which is 1, 2, 3, 4. And I'm doing exact match. All right, so that is a uh, great way to do that if I take Joe, uh, California. Now, you could mix this up, right, and then get an NA. And then you'd want to do something like uh, either the if that we saw, or in 2007 or later, you do the if error. And then some message like choose again or something more informative than that. I can't even spell F7. Look, I spelled it so wrong it hardly even knows. Choose again. All right, so then we get uh, California. There it is. Now, what if you couldn't add this? Occasionally, that will happen. Now, this is this formula here is going to get a little fancy here. Uh, it's going to be what's called an array formula. It's going to require a special keystroke. Normal formulas, you just hit Enter or Control Enter. But here, we're going to have to use Control Shift Enter. Now. Here, the first example is really the best way, because you just add this extra column. You have your unique identifier. But if you can't do that for some reason, inside the formula, we are going to have to create these two columns joined together. Not only that, but once we join them together, we're then inside the formula going to have to say, hey, this is the first column. 
and this is going to be the second column. And we're going to use the choose function to do that. Now, this is going to get a little fancy here. V lookup. We're still going to look up this. There's our lookup value, comma, our table. We're going to have to, as I said, make make this table actually inside the formula. Now, we're going to use the choose function because we're going to, in two separate steps, we're going to have to join these two columns in one step. And then in another step, we're going to have to join this new single uh, join column with this one. So choose, we have two steps. The choose function is a lookup function, and we'll talk about this one later also in more detail. But usually you give it a number like 1, 2, 3, 4, and you just type in all of the things that potentially can be delivered to the formula of the cell. But I want two things simultaneously, so I'm going to put curly bracket 1, 2, and curly bracket. Now that's an array constant. And what it's going to tell the choose is take the first column, which we're going to create in just a moment, and mash it together with the second column, that'll be this one, simultaneously. All right, the value, one, two, choose, you, you actually type in all your values. Well, I'm going to take this whole column and join it with this whole other column. Now let's check this out. Right in the middle of the formula, you can highlight this and hit the F9 key. And sure enough, you can see there's, oh, just like it looks like here. That semicolon in array syntax means go to the next row. So sure enough, it's Joe Washington, Joe Oregon, Joe Cali California, Sue Arizona. Control Z. That's the first column. Remember, simultaneously get one and two and put them together comma, and then the value, the second value is going to be this. That is fancy. That choose there literally made up a lookup table that didn't exist in the spreadsheet. So watch this. If I highlight this entire thing and hit the F9 key, you got to be kidding. Joe Washington, comma, means go over to the next column. That thing, which is that ID, semicolon means go down to the next row. And then it's this one, this one. Absolutely amazing. Control Z. All right, so that's the table array, comma, column index. We have one, two, and I'm returning the second, right? Because our choose mashed these together for the first one and then had this for the second, comma, and we're doing exact zero. Now, if you hit Enter, it's going to give you NA because array formulas require Control Shift Enter. So if you enter an array formula, you could actually get a value or an NA in this case. Uh, and the array part of this is, the definition of an array formula is you do some operation on more than one cell. And notice the whole column, and then this is the operation join with another column. Forget it. That's an array formula, so you have to control shift and enter. And there we go. So now if I change this to Joe Oregon. So we're getting Joe Oregon, the correct lookup. That's pretty fancy. Again, that's probably the easier one. And I'd probably want to put the same if error there for that one. Now, there's some other situations you run into with VLOOKUP. I'm going to click on this partial text sheet. And occasionally, you get a um, situation where you have some ID. So you get a data dump for somewhere else. And they use a, a different ID than you do. But the first column of your table is contained within their larger ID. So in this case, what we want is we want to find just the word before the dash in each one of these as our lookup value, and then run the rest of the uh, of VLOOKUP the way we've been doing. Now we're going to see three examples. Here, if our table had the product name, here it has the ID in the middle. And here it has the stuff at the end. All right, now the trick here is we're going to use the left function. And the left function is straightforward. You just say from the left how many characters you want. But the trick is their variable length, right? This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is 7, and this is 4. So we're going to also use the search function to search for that dash. A cert, the search function can say at what position a particular character is. So if I do search, I can say find what text, 
dash. And there's actually two functions that do the search and find. Find is case sensitive, search is not, but we don't need to worry about uh, the dash because it's not case sensitive. So I'm going to say find that text within here. Now that'll tell me 7, right, because it's the, at the seventh position. But it means the seventh, we don't want that. We want minus 1, right? 6. 4, 7, exactly how many characters from the left we want. So now we go left. The text is that, comma, and that's how many from the left. Double click and send it down. That's just the lookup value. So now I say VLOOKUP. There's the lookup value, comma, the table, comma, and I'm extracting the price from the second column and I'm doing exact match. Another situation is when we have our the thing we want to look up in the middle. So here there's two things. The we're still going to have to run the search to find that and then add one to say where to start. But the cool thing about this is there are always going to be three. So we're looking at the actual uh, ID here, recognizing the pattern. The pattern is the dash is a variable length, so we're going to use search and then add one. But since the, the number is always three characters, we can hard code that into our formula. And we're going to use the mid function. Just take something from the middle. Left takes something from the left. Mid takes something from the middle. All right here's the text, comma, the starting position. We're going to use search. Search for what? That dash. With text extraction formulas, you always have to look at the pattern because they're always different, right? Sometimes you can hard code it in. Sometimes you have to use search or something else. All right, so we're going to search for that. That search will give us. 7, we need to add 1 because the starting position for us is going to be 8. If I highlight and hit F9, that is 8, Control Z, comma, the number of characters, 3. Now, there's going to be something interesting here, but let's just say we didn't notice that. You can already tell if you can see the difference between these two. But let's just pretend that we don't. We're going to do VLOOKUP. That's the lookup value, comma, within this table, comma, second column, comma, zero, n, a. Well, right off the bat, this is aligned to the left. This is aligned to the right. So Excel thinks this is by default a number. This is text. You cannot match text against a number. So we can uh, trick it. Value, that's this mid thing right here. And actually, if you highlight it and hit the F9 key, you can see it's in double quotes. That means Excel thinks it's text. So we'll trick it. Any operation on a number stored as text converts it back to a number. I'm adding 0. So now, just because I added the 0 to it, I hit F9. There's the number. Control Z. Whoop. Control Z. Control Enter and double click and send it down. And finally, we have the right. Now, we can notice a pattern here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. It's always going to be 4. So we simply say right of this comma 4. So that's the easiest of all of them. But rec extracting partial text always means you recognize the pattern. You better know. You know, be sure about whatever pattern you recognize. It's always four here. We're positive. That'll work just fine. It's matching text against text, so we simply look, use that as our lookup value, comma within this table. Second column, exact match. All right, so that's a, a three partial text situations. Let's go over to the next sheet, trim. Here's some another situation that happens sometimes. And you know sometimes it's hard to figure this one out. But anytime you get a situation where you have lookup and you're you have a table, comma, we're gonna extract price one, two, three, four, and we're doing exact match. So I can see right with my eyes. Quad, right? Anytime I see this, the very first thing I check for, because it can be caused by lots of things, is I check for extra spaces. 
And sure enough, there's an extra space. If I backspace, that works perfect. Now, on a huge data set, you may not want, or you, you know, for various reasons, you can't, or it's data dumped, or something like that. So we need to get rid of those extra spaces, no problem. Now, a lot of people think the trim function is great because it can give you a haircut. No, that's not what it does. Other people say, no, trim is great because it puts you on a diet. No, it doesn't do that either. All it does is it removes all extraneous spaces except for a single space between words. So trim, boom. Uh, if I highlight this and hit the F9 key, you can see that extra space, Control Z. If I highlight this trim and hit the F9 key, gone. The space is gone, Control Z, Control Enter. Now there could be other things causing problems, but that is one uh, quick, easy fix. And it looks like it's getting them all correct. I hope. No, it's not. Look at that. It's only by accident. I forgot to lock. So the rule of thumb is when you're entering a formula and copying it down, you go to the last one and you hit the F2 key. And you got to verify using this great range finder. That means the color coding. That's wrong. Go to the top, highlight, and F4 to lock it. Control Enter. Double click and send it down. OK. Now, the opposite can happen. If we scroll down here, we could have spaces in the actual lookup table. And so instead of doing trim on the lookup value, we'll do trim on the table. Now, we're going to be doing an operation on an array here. So we're going to have to use Control-Shift-Enter. So VLOOKUP, I want to look up this. Comma, I'm just going to pretend that I, I don't know. F4 to lock it. Comma, column index, 1, 2, 3, 4. That has the price we're trying to retrieve. Comma, and we're doing an exact match. Control Enter. So NA, we double click and send it down. And we do some investigating. Now, in a small table like this, certainly is easy enough to just get rid of the spaces. But if for some reason you couldn't, We'll just do trim on the table. Now we'll cause, yeah, we'll do trim on the table. The thing about trim function, just like left, right, mid, trim, all of these functions deliver text. So let's just see if this works. Control, sh let's just, um, I, all I did was hit Enter. That value error, you'll either see a value error or an NA that says you didn't enter your array formula with the uh, correct keystroke. So I'm going to hold Control, Shift, and Enter. Immediately when you see a number aligned to the left, you, you, you suspect that there is some trouble here. And what's happening is trim is delivering text. So, And we can highlight this actually in C, F9. And sure enough, got rid of all the spaces, really, in just the first one. But now the number is text, no problem. Just as we did a little while ago earlier in the video, we can do any operation on a number stored as text, and it converts it back to a number as a number. So I'm simply going to add 0. Control, Shift, Enter. Double click and send it down. So there we did trim on the actual table. All right, let's go look at another example, three tables. So in this situation, Alt-W-G. And actually, I see that I d deleted something here. Uh, but OK, so the situation is we have uh, to look something up, units sold. But we have different products, and each different product has different commission rates. Oh, so what are we going to do here? Well, first, uh, we have to have some trigger that tells the formula which table to go to. And there's a, there's a few ways we could do this. Now, uh, I just put the ABC up here just so we know which table is which. Since we have to choose amongst three different tables, let's use the choose function. Now, earlier in this video, we saw the choose function. And our index number, we actually gave it a 1 and a 2, so it simultaneously chose both of them. But here we're going to use choose in the traditional sense. We're either going to put a 1 for ABC, a 2 for EDR, or a 3 for EDS. 
Now, how are we going to do that when the input that we have and the, the trigger is the actual product name? Right? So I'm actually going to click Escape and come down here and type a, a third or fourth table. One, two, three. All this is is we have our product name as the first column. Here, this is going to be the trigger for any particular calculation. I need which table. From ABC, we're going to need to have a 1 there inside of the choose, which will say, go here. All right, so equals choose. Now, the index number, let me just skip over that for a second. The value is going to be easy. I'm going to highlight the first table and F4, comma, the second table and F4 to lock it and then the third table in F4. Because what does choose do? Choose is a lookup function where you give it some number, and then you just put all of the values actually in the formula. But look at this. In this case, we're choosing columns. The order is important. ABC is 1, EDR is 2, and EDS is 3. That's why we have this table here. And guess what? For the index number, we are going to do a VLOOKUP inside of the choose. All right, this is just to get the right table, right? Lookup value, that right there, relative cell reference, comma, the table, and F4. Right now, ABC will look up, VLOOKUP will take this, deliver a 1 inside that, right? Comma, but back to the VLOOKUP. We're looking up ABC. We need to say which column here has the table number. It's the second one, so I'm going to type a 2. Sometimes when you're doing big formulas, these screen tips really help. That means I'm inside the choose column index, comma, and I need uh, exact match, so I'm going to put a 0. Close parentheses. Now watch this. Once I close parentheses, now I'm back to the choose screen tip. And then there I have my range. Now, if I highlight this, Remember, choose is just deciding which table. And I hit F9. Sure enough, it got this first one, right? Comma, 1%, semicolon means goes down to the next row. 100, comma, 2%. There it is right there. Semicolon means go down to the next row. So it chose just one amongst those three tables. Now, that whole thing right there is going to go inside the VLOOKUP where the lookup table goes. So you ready? V lookup. What's the lookup value? Finally, we're down to the units, right? Because that's what we're trying to do is get a rate. So I'm going to select relative cell reference there, comma, that table array, that gigantic thing right there. I come to the end. I'm going to type a comma. Column index is second. That's the second in each one of these. And this is approximate match. So when I type a 2, and a comma, I don't really need that. The default is approximate match, so I'm going to backspace. And that's done with our formula. I simply put a close parentheses and control enter. No control shift enter. There's no operation on an array there. Double click and send it down. So EDS 188, EDS. The way approximate works is it bumps into the first number bigger jumps back the next row and delivers the 2 here. For ABC 493, that should be 4%. So sure enough, it's working. Let's try EDR. Let's put something like 600 here, and then that should be 6%, which is correct. Control Z. All right, so that's one way to look up multiple tables. Uh, let's go see another example. I clicked on the two-way sheet. Now here we're going to do two-way lookup. We actually already saw an example of this, but we want to explicitly do it here because VLOOKUP is often thought of as just being able to do a one-way lookup, meaning you just look up a row number. But here we want to ex uh, explicitly do two-way lookup. We have some income and allowances. So if we have 200 income, allowance is 3. We need the intersection of that 3 and that approximate match there. No problem. We'll use VLOOKUP to determine the row and MATCH to determine the column equals VLOOKUP. The lookup value for the row is the 200 income, comma, the table. Make sure to get those right there, comma, and then the column index. We'll just use MATCH. MATCH is a lookup function. 
that allows us to look up a value, and it tells us the relative position. So lookup array, it's going to be those right there, comma, 0, close parentheses. So the match will deliver a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The lookup uh, range or the, the match type, it's approximate, right? Because this VLOOKUP is looking here. It needs to bump into the first bigger one and jump back. So we leave it off. The default is approximate. All right. And so now if I change this to 1,900, then we have 3 and 6 bucks. So that's two-way lookup using match and VLOOKUP. And finally, the last example. This will be a doozy. We want to see how to, for some situations, this is actually uh, a tax example, but you could have variable tax rates, variable commission rates, and how we solve this problem is similar for all of these. Now, the trick to doing variable rates is to build a smart table. And most tax tables uh, come already kind of completed for you. Because here's the deal, our taxable earnings or 2000 But the first $1,313 is 0. The difference between these two will be taxed at 10. Anything above that between these two values will be 15. Between these two will be 25. So it really is a, a multi-step complicated calculation here. But the trick is, is you, you calculate all the taxes from the previous brackets. Actually, if you do taxes, the table literally, when you download it, looks just like this. And here's how it works. So I'm going to start off with 7,000. Right? So what it does is it has to be over this, but not over this. So we're on this row right here. And here's the rule. It says take $712.40. That's all the taxes calculated from previous brackets, plus 25% of the excess over 6,304. Because that number right there represents all of the taxes that have already been taxed from earlier brackets. So here's the deal. Let's just see if we can do this um, right here off to the side. If you were not automating it, here's how you do it. You'd say equals, well, the rule says 712, so I'm going to take that, plus any excess. Well, this is the amount that's already been taxed, so I'm going to take my 7,000 minus this, and then times the tax rate. And so that gives us our 88640. So really what we did here, if we're going to automate this, we can literally take this formula. That is going to be a VLOOKUP, because there is the number to look up approximate match. I actually added. Uh, tax tables look like this, but we need uh, the smallest number in the category to occur in the first column. So I just added an extra column. I said 6,004 plus one penny, because notice this says over that amount. So 7,000 we're going to look up, and that will determine this row. But look, once we know the row, that E7 right there is which column? One, two, three, four, five. This one is 1, 2, and this one is 1, 2, 3, 4. That means there's going to be a VLOOKUP there with column 5, a VLOOKUP there with column 2, and a VLOOKUP there with column 4. Watch this. I'm going to cheat and just even put this here. That'll be our prompt. So I'm going to double click that, and I'm going to type VLOOKUP. What's the lookup value? Every single time it's going to be that. The table array. I'm going to highlight it. Uh, yeah, we can just do the, the whole. Well, we're never going to use that last one right there. OK, so that's the table array, comma. And this one gets 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, because we need that 7, 12, so 5. And the last argument we don't need because it's approximate match, so we leave it off. Now I'm going to copy this control. So let's just see if that gives us the right number. OK. All right, so we have VLOOKUP that just substituted for that one cell reference. We're always going to need that 7,000, but we're going to need another VLOOKUP right there. Now, I copied this right there in edit mode, so I'm going to Control-V. And what's the only difference? 
I need the, the amount that's been taxed from earlier brackets on this line, which is column 2. So I simply change it to 2. And then finally, I need 1, 2, 3, 4, the tax rate. So I control V and change it to 4. Now the nice thing about this formula here, not this one, uh, is this one, when I change the number right here, will not update. That's manual. This is automatic. So if I change this to 2,500, boom, one, uh, $141.80. But this one's totally incorrect. You'd have to redo it each time manually. Wow, that was a lot about VLOOKUP 25 examples. You know, but I've already thought of one other example I'd like to do. So I'm going to add a 26 one. I'm going to click on this extra sheet here. And I'm going to call this uh, dynamic. So we have a product. And we have a price. And the idea for this is that oftentimes your tables change over time. So I'm going to have my Bellin and the price of 25 or whatever it is. and the Carlota boomerang, and that's a 26. We'll make a little small example here. The idea is I want it expandable, an expandable range. I'm going to click in one cell, and in 2003, 2007, and 10, you can have it, uh, the table or list feature. In 2003, it's Control L. In 2007 and 10, it's Control T. When I click OK, it formats it. But anytime I add a new record down here, any formula or chart or whatever that's looking at it will automatically expand. So here I'm going to have my product and my price. I'm going to type Bellin. And then I'm going to do equals VLOOKUP. There's the lookup value, comma, and watch this. When I highlight that, it says A2 to B3. OK, but notice B3, comma, I'm retrieving something from the second column, comma, and 0. No problem. Now let's come down here in Tables. You can either click in the last cell and hit Tab. I'm going to Control-Z, or you can just start typing Quad 36. And now I'm going to come up here and quad. And sure enough, I've got 36. And now let's look at this in edit mode. Oh, it went to B4. So it knows. So that's an example of when you have an expandable range. Let's do Alt D L, Tab L, Tab. And I'm going to highlight this range right here, A2 to A4, and click OK. So now, right now, it's got quad. When I come here and I type Majestic Butte uh, 35, so when I come down here, oh, ho, ho, look at that. So the data validation now has expanded. And sure enough, the price has too. All right, uh, 26 examples of VLOOKUP. We'll see you next video. And there'll be more videos throughout this uh, week with other lookup functions and other lookup tricks. See you next video.